So many movies and books today surround the theme of superpowers, the ability to go beyond the barriers of our paltry existence and do something super. Superpowers overcome barriers like physical strength, gravity, energy, and even time. Well, I'm here to introduce you to a superpower for overcoming challenges in the workplace. It is called SPC, or Statistical Process Control. This power, based on principles of basic stats and data visualization, can help us overcome our limited resources by knowing how to better respond to the common tasks thrown at us daily, data. So in my role as Chief Medical Officer, I get presented with a lot of data and it's hard sometimes to figure out which pieces of information to focus on. SPC really gives me that opportunity to make sure I'm focusing on the most important data at any time. It helps me figure out what resources to allocate to what problems. It's really helped me think about and see which problems really need focus and attention by giving a clear uh, picture of what the process actually is. My call to action is that Individuals can use SPC to figure out what to tolerate and what things to focus on. There are many data points that you'll get presented with throughout time, and it's really important to have a tool that will help you focus on certain key pieces of information. Here's an example. You're a clinic manager trying to reduce patient wait time. You track it weekly and see the following. What is the process data telling you? Well, you can see your wait time is on average 30 minutes, it is also telling you that you sometimes have days where the wait time is 20 minutes and other days when it is 40 minutes. Your process is telling you that it has variation. This variation is expected. All processes have it. The question is, how do you know when to react to it? As the clinic manager, let's say you set a patient wait time target of 10 minutes. You continue tracking the data and this is what happens. The data is not on target the past two weeks. Should you go and examine what happened? Should you create a team or schedule a meeting to discuss? The answer is no, you should not. Here is why. SPC teaches us about control limits, calculated boundary lines that indicate if a process is stable or if something abnormal is occurring. Know your limits, Master Wayne. Batman has no limits. Unlike Batman, every process has limits. It was designed that way. If we put the control limits on this graph, we can see that the data is within the control limits. The process is telling us through its voice called data that, hey, everything is normal here. I'm just doing what you designed me to do. If we put a target on that chart, like we have here, the voice of the process doesn't change. It still is saying the same thing. We, the voice of the customer, are now asking it to do something different. So what I am saying here is that there is nothing to be learned from examining those two data points. Save your resources and time, leave it alone. The process is doing what it has always done. Adding a target doesn't change that. Now, what if the process did this though? Let's say we had seven weeks in a row where our wait times averaged above our 30 minute average. Now is something special happening? The answer is probably yes. And as a manager, you should examine what is going on. This is another thing SPC teaches us that there are indicators we can watch for to tell us when to respond to the voice of the process. To understand this further, here are some important terms. The normal up and down variation all processes have is called common cause variation, or sometimes referred to as normal or random variation. The out of the ordinary variation, like seven points on one side of the central line or mean, is called special cause variation. There are many types of special cause variation, which we will touch on later. Control limits are calculated boundary lines we can add to our run charts to show where the normal common cause variation of a process is occurring. Control limits are calculated differently depending on the type of data. An easy way to do it is to set them two to three standard deviations from your mean. Many common spreadsheet tools can calculate them for you. But put simply, they represent the variation between or within points across a designated time frame, capturing a range where we can confidently say the process will perform. Now, let's review the key learning so far in this video. First, processes tell us how they are performing through data and variation, often called the voice of the process. Second, we place targets or benchmarks on a process 
to tell it to perform differently, the voice of the customer. Third, processes have two different forms of variation. They have common cause variation, the normal ups and downs every process has, and they also have special cause variation, when a process performs abnormally based on historical performance. We've also learned that control limits are calculated boundaries we put on a run chart, making it a control chart to indicate the range of common cause variation. As mentioned earlier, there are different types of special cause variation we should look for when observing process data. Here are the more popular ones. The first one was shown in the patient wait time example. It is when seven or more consecutive points are on one side of the center line. These are called shifts and are commonly what you're looking for when doing improvement work. The second one is when you see a point go outside the control limits. Don't miss opportunities to learn from these. Ask your team what happened that day. Look for something out of the ordinary and learn from it. These are called outliers and are usually looked for in the sustainment phase of a process. The third most common indicator is called a trend. This is when you have seven or more consecutive points trending upward or downward. So you may ask, why seven points? Well, statistical rules actually say it could be six, seven, or even eight, depending on your data type. The rule of sevens is just an easy and safe rule to remember. If you're interested in the specific rules, feel free to review books such as the Healthcare Data Guide or Understanding Variation. Both go much deeper into these concepts. The overly simplified way to think about it is this. When you have a process, and have calculated its center line, the likelihood that any given point falls on one side of the center line is about 50%. The likelihood that two points fall on the same side is 50 times 50, which is 25%. The likelihood to see that seven times is 1%. So after seven consecutive points on one side, we can be 99% confident that a change has occurred. Now, let's practice everything we learned with another common healthcare project, reducing length of stay. Here's your run chart, showing the length of stay for 12 weeks for a specific patient population. You calculated the average as shown here. You've also calculated control limits and have indicated them here using the dashed lines. Now your run chart is a control chart. So what is the voice of process telling you? It is saying you have an average length of stay of 4.2 days and that common cause variation will be between 2 and 6 days as indicated by the control limits. We're now starting an improvement project with the target to reduce average length of stay to three days. Let's see if our solutions have an impact. After two weeks, we can see both had an average length of stay of around two days. It will be tempting to say you have seen improvement and you will want to add a new mean. Don't do it. There's not enough evidence here. The third week, you had a length of stay of 6.3 days. Should we go react to it? Yes, something abnormal occurred here, what we call an outlier one of your improvement ideas may have made things worse. After another seven plus weeks though, you see what you've been hoping to see, a shift towards your goal. Now that you've seen this, you can consider changing your mean and telling others you have seen positive change. You can also see that the control limits have narrowed, which means not only have you changed the average performance, but your patients and staff are experiencing more consistent, more reliable care. Notice in the chart, I didn't extend the center line or control limits across the points during your project. Because of all the changes happening to the process, a project being started, solutions being tested, the process cannot be stable here. We stop extending the lines during the improvement phase and wait until later when we see a shift to show this new process state. So if you didn't have SPC power for this project, what may have happened? Well, on this point, you may have spent hours trying to figure out what happened, only to find the process was just doing what it does, normal random variation. After these two points, you may have told the team to get their act together, and it would have felt like they did nothing differently. And after these two points, you may have planned a celebration, told your boss, and later found out nothing special occurred. So there you go. You have a new superpower. You only reacted when you needed to, saved time, resources, and energy using SPC. This skill takes practice. You shouldn't have mastered it by simply watching this video. Look at the data sets you review daily, weekly, had control limits where appropriate, and practice determining special cause from common cause variation. As with any superpower though, it does have some weaknesses to watch out for. Here are some common ones. If your data set is less than 12 points or has very little variation, don't add control limits. Just use a run chart with a center line, preferably a median, and you can still watch for shifts or trends. 
For never events like a hospital infection or mortality, be careful with using control charts. Someone might say, that hospital acquired infection was within the control limits, so we shouldn't react to it. Rare events like these should be examined, as they should never occur. There are special charts you can use for these. Your local improvement professional can help you identify them. So there you have it, that's SPC. Have fun using it. In the end, you will find yourself with more time as you more thoughtfully respond to the voice of processes, speaking to us every day.